Good afternoon and welcome to D for Diving's YouTube channel. Welcome. If you're new to our channel, then thank you for dropping by and taking a moment to have a look at our content. If you've seen some of our comment before, then thank you very much for coming back and I hope you enjoy this content too. As an experienced dive professional working in a resort setting, I wanted to create this channel in order to produce content which talks to you as a diver about training, about equipment, about trends, and also about diving, which means that we can provide you with a little bit more information to help you make better decisions and provide you with better choices as you go forward. I love diving, the team here at DIFA, we all love diving, and the fact that you're here watching this video means you also like diving too. So let's dive in and have a look at today's hot topic. So before I go any further, I would just like to ask if you enjoy this video, if you can give it the thumbs If you like what we've got to say, make sure you splash down on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and you'll get notified of any new content as we put it up. But without further ado, let's have a look at what I wanted to talk about today. So recently we did a video on uh, how to get the most from your dive master course, five top reasons there. And I'll put a link to that video down in the description below. In this video though, we were highlighting why people might want to do uh, dive master and it was talking about the linear progression. And I've had quite a few divers ask me and I've had quite a bit of response to that video saying, I'm not sure I want to do dive master. What else is out there? And that's a very, very good question because for many people, they look at the chart of the qualifications that you can do and they see it as a linear progression and assume as you hit rescue diver, the next step is dive master or master diver. And the reality is diving isn't a linear thing. Diving is all about you and it's about the choices that you want to make and about what options are best suited for you because of what you're interested in. And the only way that you can figure that out is by working with a dive professional to help you talk through the different possibilities, the different options, and to come up with what we refer to as a personal development plan. In these personal development plans, we look at what it is in diving that excites you, what it is that interests you, where your aspirations lie longer term, and start to look at what could be the possible next steps that can progress you along that development plan to get the goals that you want to achieve. So here are five top things that you could go into your personal development plan. And number number one, one, do some diving. Sounds kind of obvious, but for many people, they get on the bandwagon of doing courses, course after course after course. And so what happens then is they feel as though diving and diving progression is about rushing through these courses. And sometimes it's not. Let's think of it this way. We do diving because it's fun. It's fun because we get to travel. It's fun because it's social. It's fun because it's exciting. And it's fun because we get to explore a new world. If we're only doing courses back home in a lake or a quarry, maybe it's not so much fun anymore. So I urge you to go out and try diving, to cement the development you've already made, to master those skills that you've, you've already attained or uh, worked on. Um, and to get out there and get some sand between your toes and some water over your gills and just do what diving's all about, which is fun. It's enjoying yourself. You'll gain one of the most useful commodities that anybody can gain anywhere in their life, and that's experience. You can't ask for anything more than experience. Number two is do some specialties. Now, there are many divers that will dismiss specialties and say, not worth doing it. But actually, do some specialties. Work towards your master diver. It's a great accreditation, it's a great certification, and it demonstrates to people that you are committed to the sport and you're interested in furthering your development. But it's it's not the holy grail, it's not what you should aim for. It's a path that you end up getting to by virtue of the fact that you're investing in your education. So why specialties? Well, specialties are good because they allow you to work hand in hand with an instructor and experience some elements of diving that you wouldn't necessarily ordinarily get into. So whether that be new equipment, new environments, um, new techniques, um, different things that you might want to try that, that, yes, you could do on your own. You could do them without a dive pro, but you could also make a lot of mistakes and spend a lot of money and not get any better. So specialties, working with somebody who who loves what they're doing are a good way of advancing your knowledge, of advancing your um, interest in diving in a safe, 
controlled manner that's cost effective. Um, do you need a specialty? No. Is it good to have one? Probably is, actually. Yeah, why not? It's important, though, if you're looking at doing a specialty, that you hook up with an instructor who's passionate about teaching that subject. Now, I can teach you about fish ID. I can, honestly. It's not my beef. And I'm sure that there are a thousand instructors out there who are much better at teaching it than I am. So it's a good idea to find out who are the instructors that are really interested, in, that are locally to you, who are really interested in the subject that you want to learn about and buddy up with them and do the course with them. Don't necessarily choose the instructor who's at the dive center that's local to you, who you had a few beers with and did your own water course because they may not be the best person to teach you that course. Number, Number three. three that you could have a look at if you wanted to further your understanding of diving is to look at doing an extended range or an intro to tech type course. So whether that be a tech rec paddy uh, uh, tech 40, whether that be uh, advanced nitrox and deco procedures or the extended range products from SSI. These are great things to learn. Why? Well, personally, I'm a massive fan of increasing my knowledge and, and, and my awareness of the sciences involved in diving. What's going on around me? What's happening to me? Why is it? So one of the things we learn as we progress through diving is that there is decompression theory. Um, within recreational diving, we learn that this decompression exists. We learn there's a limit. Don't go over the limit. That's it. There's a limit. Don't do it. Don't go over it. Don't go, don't go near it. Don't Just don't. Don't. You heard me. Don't. But what if you do? What if you want to? What if you're interested in that? Well, that's where the whole idea of the extended range or tech creational courses comes in. Here, you'll learn about advanced decompression theory, you'll learn about nitrox um, and mixed gases, and you'll do some diving which will include 10 or 15 minutes of decompression diving. And what these allow you to do is understand what the risks are, understand what the limitations are, and understand what the planning criteria are, so that you're better informed. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to want to go full tech. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have a depth wish and you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper. But it's just part of broadening your knowledge, widening your uh, understanding. I'll stick a link to a video we did before on why we think every dive professional should know something about uh, extended range uh, and advanced nitrox decompression procedures, just purely because I think in terms of broadening our own understanding, it's a good idea. Number four. Try a different configuration or technology of diving. Try side mount, try twin sets, maybe semi or fully closed rebreathers. Um, experience a new way of diving, which means that you, you never know, you might actually like it. You might find it's a better experience than what you've been used to. But without that, that connection with an instructor who can work with you to develop that, you'll never know. Um, I'm a rebreather diver. I love rebreather diving. Uh, I got into it through the recreational route. Um, so recreational rebreather diving is diving to the same limits that we have for open circuit recreational diving. So a maximum of 40 meters, 130 feet, and no decompression uh, diving. So recreational rebreathers, it just means that we can dive longer, but we're not necessarily diving deeper. But the pieces that I love about this is the fact that you're diving bubble free. You're diving silent. You can get closer marine encounters. You'll get the big pelagics. They'll come and check you out. Um, I'll regularly get buzzed by eagle rays or sharks, which on open circuit, there's no way they're coming anywhere near you. For photography, I can get much closer. For videography, I can get much closer and stay longer with the marine life that I'm wanting to play with or, or look at. And so personally, I think that it's, it's a great thing uh, to have a look at. As I said, I'll put a link below. Uh, to a video we've done about rebreather diving and why we think it's really, really good. And that brings us on to number, number five. five. With number five, do your dive master. Crazy as that sounds, for some people who, who look at it and say, I don't want to do my dive master, it's not the next linear progression for me. For some people, it actually is. It is the next course. It is the right thing for them to do. And so maybe you want to learn more about dive planning and maybe you want to learn more about dive management and maybe you want to be a dive leader. Um, you don't want to be a dive pro, that's fine, but, but 
you, maybe you're diving with your family, you've got kids involved, and so you'd like to be more competent and more confident about planning the dive, about managing the dive, and about ensuring you and your family get back to the boat or back to shore in one piece, safe and sound, having had an amazing experience. In which case, the things that you will learn in the Dive Master course are all linked towards doing that and accomplishing that. And so all the things that you will learn as you progress through your dive master will be about risk management, risk mitigation, understanding the environment, and how to pull all of that together so that it'll likely prepare you to be a better diver. So these are five key things that we've pulled together very, very quickly that could give you some options of what you might want to do on the next steps for your personal development plan. So as I said right at the start, hook up with your local dive center, hook up with your local pro, contact us. Let's work together on building personal development plans for divers so that they have a goal to aim for, something that they want to achieve that's personal to them. And as you achieve that goal that's personal to you, you can reward yourself with another dive trip or another piece of dive equipment that's specialist to what you want to do and make it personal for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, as I've said, hit the like button uh, and uh, hit the subscribe button as well if you'd like to. Please, please, please leave some comments below uh, and give us some feedback on this video or any of the videos we have on our channel, but also on your thoughts about developing your own personal diver development plan um, so that you can gain the most from your time whilst diving. Have a great day, good afternoon, and keep diving. <laughs>